Okay, so hi everyone. Welcome back from the break. Uh, my name is Jack. I work for Amazon EMR and Athena. Uh, and uh, just to explain a little bit about why it's for two services, uh, we have the shared storage service, which maintains all the table formats and file formats, including Iceberg, Kudi, Delta, Parquet, Avro, Org, even JSON, CSV. Uh, so my team manages all of that for both EMR, Spark, Flink, Trino, and Athena, Trino. Uh, so and uh, me as a part of the Iceberg community and also a PMC member for Iceberg, uh, of course, works a bit more with Iceberg integrations. So today the topic is about integrating the REST catalog specification with Spark and Trino. Uh, and just a little bit of the explanation about the title. When I talk about integration, uh, the current integration so far is mostly contributed by Tableau and Subburst uh, to Spark and Trino. Uh, so we are mostly just verifying, experimenting, about the integration, and we are currently proposing new changes that I'm going to talk about. So first of all, why do we even care about the REST catalog spec? Don't we already have Glue Data Catalog? So the answer is that uh, they are for two very different types of customers. For Glue Data Catalog, it is still the de facto catalog that we recommend for the customers. It is the out-of-the-box serverless data catalog. If you have an AWS account, then you get a Glue Data Catalog out of the box. You don't need to do anything, and it just works. And it is the catalog that integrates first with all the AWS managed lakehouse experience, including all the features in Athena, EMR, Glue ETL, Russia Spectrum, and Lake Formation, Fine Green Access Control, and Auto Compaction features. However, there's always a different set of customers who want something different. And uh, that is when the REST catalog specification comes in. And uh, over the past years, we really see an increasing number of customers, especially for EMR users that are using REST. Uh, these customers, some come from third-party vendors, such as Tabular, Databrick, Uniform, or uh, Caldera, et cetera. And uh, there's another group of customers that uses their in-house data catalogs. And uh, they are not willing to use Glue or any other vendor, maybe because of legal compliance issues, maybe because they want to avoid vendor locking, just different reasons. So they want to integrate and provide a iceberg REST catalog interface. That gives them the free option to integrate with all the engines with their in-house solutions. So uh, over the past year, we actually got the opportunity to experiment with building one by ourselves. Uh, the opportunity came with improving one of our internal data catalog services in Amazon. And uh, uh, the goal is to, just like any other catalog integrations, we want to provide the Iceberg Catalog API on top of the existing service uh, to gain wider adoptions for engine integrations. And also, with this opportunity, we want to make that like a research project to explore different organization directions for what can Iceberg on Glue do in the future, what are some of the things we can improve performance, improve usability. So that's kind of the setup of how we end up with working on the REST catalog things. So um, there, most of the things worked quite well. We actually are able to integrate the catalog with SIGV4 authentication internally in Amazon. We are able to convert the Open APIs back with our internal uh, service definition models. Uh, and it all works out of the box with Spark, Trino, and also all the Python engines, Glue ETL, Onray, et cetera. Um, there are a few things that didn't quite work, uh, such as response, error response, pagination support, and uh, some discussions about commit transactions. But these are not the focus of this talk. Uh, I have leave, left the links here. So I hope, hopefully, the presentation will be shared afterwards so you guys can look into the link for more details. Uh, what I really want to talk about here is the performance improvement experience we have done uh, as a part of this effort. Um, so in general, we want more intelligent scan planning um, that is happening in Iceberg. Uh, so today, when you do a scan planning, uh, you read the manifest list and then go to the manifest files, and uh, then that gives you a list of files that you should read in Parquet, Avro, Org, and then you go to S3 to read the files. Um, but I think we can do a bit better um, with more intelligent scan planning. For example, in the graph that is shown here, I have Athena Trino powered QuickSight dashboard that is running some scans uh, against some filters. And on the other side, I have some SageMaker users who is 
using maybe just a Python or even DuckDB um, in, in a single machine learning box to run some AI workflows. And they happen to run into the same scan. So technically, the, the other user should be able to just use a cache result, right? And um, that is something we experiment and experimented and worked. And also, uh, in, uh, we tested uh, scan planning with additional indexes on different, uh, on, on one of the largest tables in Amazon. I'm not going to say which table, but one of the biggest tables, as you can see, that uh, a normal scan planning takes two minutes, uh, almost three minutes to complete. Um, and uh, we are able to reduce the time to just three seconds um, for by, by providing different kinds of manifest indexes. So uh, in order to achieve that, what we end up having is a scan APR in the REST catalog. So uh, we essentially are moving the idea of running the manifest list to manifest uh, scan planning logic to the service side so we can apply more and more optimizations on top of that behind the scene although the user is still using the REST catalog client. Uh, we have posted our DevNest discussions, proposals, and a draft PR so far, and uh, uh, we have seen consensus and we are moving forward with the actual implementation. Um, this is literally what I pasted from the latest DevNest discussions that we are ending up with uh, two different APIs, one for plan table, uh, so, so the user can request a plan for a table uh, with some filters and selecting some columns, and the response will be a list of file scan tasks. Uh, because we know today in Iceberg, uh, we already have the JSON serializer for serializer and deserializer for the file scan tasks. So we should we already have the draft API, which proves that it can be converted into the open API stack. And we are currently moving uh, that implementation forward. And uh, in order to mimic the experience of iceberg, icebergs. Uh, two-level indexing planning, uh, we are also introducing a pre-plan table uh, API so that we can pre-plan table, which, um, which will return to us uh, ideally some kind of manifest um, format. And uh, then by pro providing that manifest format, which we call here the, the plan task, we are able to get a more fine-grained uh, file scan task. This will allow us to really parallelize the scan planning efforts. So, uh, one of the biggest questions is that uh, while you guys are moving the scan planning to the service side, uh, what about the iceberg format itself? Aren't there already the puffing spec? Uh, aren't there already the proposal for doing things like publishing stats? There are also all sorts of different proposals floating around about uh, I, I might want to add Bloom filters or all sorts of different indexes into the manifest files. Um, I think we see this more as a way to promote actually those changes. Because as the iceberg stack is getting more and more complex, um, there are more and more debates about, hey, we should add this, but oh, it has these drawbacks. Uh, and it doesn't really make the clean cut about do we want to add that, do we don't want to add that, and the discussion just keeps going on. Um, but once we have, for example, here, the scan API, we can propose optimization, and we can make the changes at the service side. And based on that, we can actually get customer feedback, production use case results. Does it actually improve the performance? Does it regress the performance in some cases? And based on that, we can uh, have a better stack proposal and uh, have more concrete data to propose in the open source. And if it works, then it becomes a new version of Iceberg, then we move that into all the EMR and the theme distributions. But if it doesn't work, then we go with the cycle again, but uh, we will be having more and more data to better push the proposals forward. So we really see this as a way to push forward the uh, progress in the iceberg spec changes. And uh, with the scan, scan API, another question is, can we also do the same thing for writing data? Uh, because today, in order to do a, a data write, you have to first uh, write the manifest files and then the manifest list. and in, and the metadata files, and then you call the API to do the commit, which is three files to do everything. Um, but why don't we, if you have a file to append, why don't you just call append files, right? Uh, if you want to delete a file, why don't you just do that? Uh, that is kind of what we are proposing here uh, to add those operations to the spec. Um, and uh, there's, there's a kind of a controversial way is that can we actually also append delete files? 
uh, because if we can do that, we can express these even in a like a local Python thread to say that I want to delete something and the data query will return the results. But this is getting a bit more controversial that we want to have more discussions with the community. Um, we actually tested implementing this uh, with our internal REST service. And uh, um, this is to verify a known issue with Google Data Catalog that we receive lots of complaints with people who run Athena with Google Data Catalog on Iceberg, that if you run many parallel commits, then the failure rate is super high. As you can see here, almost three quarters of the commits failed. And when I say failed, it is after exhausting the four retries by default, and it still failed. Um, but if you can see that after implementing the commit API with some uh, work on the back end, we are able to almost, almost remove all the commit conflicts. Uh, when you have parallel commits. And uh, there are also some other benefits for the scan commit APIs. The most obvious one being that you can have more easy integrations with new, new languages. And also something interesting to think about is today the iceberg REST spec has the metrics API, report metrics for the commit metric and the scan metric. But if you have these APIs, then technically you don't need the metric API anymore because you, you know exactly what happens for the scan commit. Um, on the other side, um, there's a very interesting use case for table migration, or I say no migration, because with these APIs, you can actually express non-iceberg tables as iceberg tables. Just take a high packet table exa example. I can, I can actually say that this is an iceberg table with one schema, one partition spec, a fake snapshot, and some column mapping, name mappings. And if I read and write through the scan commit API, the user won't even know um, you are interacting with a hive table until you do more advanced operations, then the service is going to fail you. Um, so, so it opens these kind of interesting use cases that are for more discussions. Um, so in the end, I'd like to thank the work for other people that have been working on this and are still pushing the progress in open source. And also thank for the help from different people from the iceberg community for helping us to push these proposals forward. Yeah, thank you.